Yeah, the 10th District Court of Travis County is now in session. The Honorable Jessica Mangrum presiding. All right, good afternoon. Welcome back to the 200th District Court. We are here this afternoon in the continuation of our hearing on cost number D1 FM 12 dash. 002379 Wolf versus Wolf. And let's see, just looking around, make sure we have everyone. I think everyone is back. Ms. Martinez, you were on the witness stand at the time that we had to break. So um, I think that Mr. Wolf was asking questions at the time. So Mr. Wolf, you may proceed. Thank you and good afternoon, Your Honor. I'm actually, uh, I have no further questions for Ms. Desi Martinez. Okay, Ms. Hobren, do you have anything further for this witness? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I do. Um, Ms. Martinez, can you please describe um, the marijuana use of Mr. Wolf while you were cohabitating? Um. I think it was done in Vegas on a trip, but it's legal there. Did you ever observe him uh, using marijuana in the state of Texas? Yes. How frequently would you say he uses marijuana at the time that you were cohabitating with him? At the time, it wasn't very often. Did he ever use marijuana in front of the children? I don't believe so. Was he ever high in front of the children? I don't believe so. Did he have any alcohol use issues that would concern you? No. No further questions, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Um, I think that concludes Ms. Martinez's testimony. If no one else has anything else for her? No, Your Honor. And Mr. Wolf? Oh, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Martinez, um, you are free to exit the virtual courtroom. You can click the red button that says leave. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. And Ms. Hobren, do you have another witness to call? Yes, Your Honor. We'd like to call Lori Watson. Okay. I'm admitting her from the waiting room. All right, Ms. Watson, if you could unmute yourself and center your camera to where your face is in the middle of the Zoom screen. Okay, I don't know if she can't hear me, but she did not do what I asked. Ms. Watson, can you hear me? This is Judge Mangrum. I need you to unmute yourself. Yeah, okay. this is Lori. I can hear you. Okay, and can you center your face so that it's in the middle of the box there? Okay. Is that better? Does that work? Yes, that's better. You just need to keep it stationary. It can't be moving around, but that's fine. If you'd raise your right hand and be sworn. Oh, I'm doing it now. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize that. Yes. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Ms. Holbrun, go ahead. Can I say one thing real quick? I'm, I just want to own up to that I'm hearing impaired, so sometimes I might need to ask to speak a little louder. And if I'm looking kind of close, it's because I'm reading lips. <laughs> okay. Thank yeah. you for that explanation. I appreciate it. Ms. Hobren, you may uh, proceed. Thank you. Ms. Watson, can you please uh, say and spell your name for the record? Lori Watson, L-O-R-I-W-A-T-S-O-N. And have you spoken with any parties, an attorney, or another witness about this case since we um, ended yesterday? No, I have not. Right. How long have you known the petitioner, um, Jeff Wolf? Roughly, oh, you said Jeff? 
Jeff. Sorry, I thought you were talking about Jackie. Um, I've known Jackie 14 years, so I would say right around the same time. Were the parties still married when you yes. met them? Yes, they were still married. And you've maintained a friendship with Jackie Wolf since you met her 14 years ago? Yes, we've been best friends since we met. And last year, around the time before uh, these proceedings began, was Jackie residing with you? Yes, ma'am. Can you speak a little bit to that situation? Uh, yeah, she just needed to um, get out of her apartment. She did have a very nice apartment, but they kept raising her rent. So I told her that she could move in with me and bring her boys, of course. And and she did. She we she moved in with me for a while, and she brought her boys, and it worked out pretty well. She moved in for, I, I don't remember how many months, to be completely honest, but she was here for quite a few months until she found a better uh, living situation for her and her boys that had a little bit more space. While she was residing with you, was there any incident or behavior that you witnessed that would give you concern for the children's safety or well-being? Uh, no. Uh, I witnessed something with Connor, but I'm not really sure if that's the same thing that's in the boat. But as far as like Jackie being a parent, I didn't witness anything that was, was off about that. When you say you witnessed something with Connor, are you talking about the incident with masturbating? Yes, ma'am. Can you please tell me what happened? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, I, it's kind of, uh, I don't remember the exact date. I just remember one day I was walking out on my couch. I caught him playing with himself, which I know is very normal. I didn't want to embarrass him at all. But when he noticed me that I, when he noticed that I caught him, he didn't get embarrassed. He just continued. So I thought that was slightly unusual. And then unfortunately, um, it happened the next day when my husband actually walked out and witnessed it. And Kevin was so great about it. So we we talked to Jackie and just said we were slightly concerned. She had no idea. And uh, immediately when she found out she did everything by the book, she called a pediatrician. She made appointments for a therapist trying to get him the help that he needed. To your knowledge, was Connor able to get that um, mental health assistance? Yeah, she took him to a pediatrician and I believe he had, I don't know the number of how many therapy appointments, but she definitely did take him to therapy. And then for some reason, I'm, well, I kind of know the reason, but I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say that she had to stop taking him to therapy. Yeah, that's all right. If you can, um, I'm not going to lead you astray. So just okay. answer the question. Well, I mean, I know the reason why I just, it wasn't her doing, let's put it that way. She wanted to continue the therapy. Did it make you concerned? Um residing with Jackie and the children that the children were not able to continue therapy? Yeah, I was really concerned because I really felt like Connor, Connor did great in therapy. I know it's just the change we all did. And then when he wasn't in therapy anymore, it just kind of felt bad that he couldn't continue because he seemed to excel very well in that therapy sessions. He had quite a few and it was Jackie taking him. Have you had any, um, negative interactions with Mr. Wolf? Um, for years, we were actually friends. Um, negative interactions? Not really. Uh, we see each other once in a while, like at baseball games. We didn't really interact at that time just because of everything that was going on. Um, when Jack and the boys did move in, though, he... I don't remember the full extent, but something about an email going back and forth between him and my common-law husband... Uh, basically, my husband was just asking Jeff p politely to please keep us out of this as we were not involved in it. We weren't even trying to take sides. We just wanted to make sure Jackie and the boys had somewhere to stay. And then we got kind of roped into it. And then my common law husband, who used to be friends with Jeff, just basically wrote him an email asking him to please put us, keep us out of it. Because we didn't really want to be part of all, the, all of this. We just wanted to give them a place to live. <laughs> So would you say that you've been fairly well informed about um, how the kids are doing, how the parents are doing since you've known these two parties? Um, no an objection. That, but, she's not a lack of personal knowledge. It's just speculation. Okay, I, I don't understand what he's saying. I can't hear. I'm not allowed to do what? 
Okay, Ms. Watson, an objection was made to the question. You need to wait. Yeah, until it's my hearing, that's why. That's okay. Just wait until the court rules on the objection. Ms. Hobrin, any response? I can rephrase the question. Yeah, okay. I'm, I apologize. It's my hearing, so sometimes I can't hear what's happening. Can you say it again, please? The my question. objection, I'm sorry. My objection was for speculation. I'm okay. Speculating Ms. As to what. Ms. Hobrin, go ahead and rephrase the question, please. Do you, have you had personal knowledge of the parties and the children over the years sufficient to have formed a um, opinion on the situation? Well, yeah, I've known both of them for many years. I mean, I okay. We know I that. I'm slightly confused about the question. Gotcha. We know that you're not an S expert, so I'm not asking you for to give expert testimony. Okay. But what I'm trying to set the foundation for is I want to know if you've seen a change in the pattern of behaviors bet between the parties and how they co-parent over the years. Oh, I'm sorry. Now I get the question. Yeah. Lori, in, the, um, Lori. In, the, in the very beginning, um, they did co-parent very well, I'll be honest. They seem to be co-parenting very, very well. I was very impressed. And then I don't exactly know why it all kind of came to a big fall. But then over the years, they just stopped co-parent very well. And then that's why this all had to happen. So you would I, say... I, I'm sorry. I need to interrupt. Ms. Okay. Watson, your camera is moving around oh. too much. Um, it's probably because you're not seated at a chair. You're it in is, a, and it's because it's I'm reading lips. I'll, I'll try this more. There, okay. I'll keep it steady. I'm sorry. All right. So the the co-parenting that's happening now is substantially more stressed than it was initially. Do I understand that correctly? Yes, ma'am. You do. Is that stress creating substantial difficulty in your personal knowledge because of your relationship with Miss Wolf? Is that stress creating substantial difficulty for Miss Wolf making decisions and handling the needs of the children? Yes, ma'am. Can you think of a particular example or is it a general observation? That I, would say, I would say probably general observation. I'll pass the witness. All right, Mr. Wolf, do you have any questions for Ms. Watson? Yes, I do. Um, and if I could, I'd like to bring into evidence uh, P26. You're welcome to share screen. I can't hear you, Mr. Wolf. I'm sorry, can you hear me better now? A little bit, yeah. I will try to if speak up. If I could up, see your uh, face, it would help because I can read lips. One moment now. I did figure out the share screen. I believe I do see the green icon down below. That screen here. Just one second. I'm sorry. Hey, Mr. Wolf, we can see the screen, but unfortunately, there's not a do document displayed on it. Okay, so, so far, so halfway, so good. Okay, give me one quick second. I will make sure I'm not wasting any time. Yes, I can. While we wait, Your Honor, um, I have no objection to the admittance of that exhibit provided the witness um, is able to confirm that it is accurate. Is, is he pulling up personal files of mine? So far, he hasn't pulled up anything. Oh, there we go, there we go, sorry. P20. Okay. 
that. Here it comes. Sorry. Is this able to be seen by everybody? No. No. You probably need to select the document and then do the screen share. Okay. Uh, I've stopped the screen share for now. Why don't you pull up the document and then select share screen? Gotcha. Yeah. And Ms. Wolf, um, I need you to adjust your camera so that I cannot see the ceiling fan shadow. It causes extreme motion sickness, migraines, Either turn the fan off or adjust your camera to where the blades and the shadows of the blades cannot be seen. Thank you. I'm hoping that this has worked. Okay, P26 is on the screen. Lori, do you recall this uh, email? Yes, I do. I couldn't remember if I sent it, but now that I'm looking at it, I can't deny that it was sent. Can you read it out loud, please? Jeff, you made a terrible decision to involve my family in this. Ever heard of slander, defamation, big mistake, enjoy what comes next, Lori. Can you tell me what you meant by enjoy what, top, what comes next? I wasn't happy that you were putting my family in the mix of this when all my family did was try to help your ex-wife and your children. I thought you would have been excited. At one point, we were friends. And then you brought my husband into this, which is why he originally sent the first email. I did it because you said some stuff in front of a judge that wasn't true. You said that I did narcotics in front of my daughter with zero proof. Okay. I have never yeah, done narcotics not, in front I just of my daughter, Jeff. What your opinion was. Hey, one at a time, please. What? How did you come to have knowledge of what was said in a court hearing that Jackie and I had? Ms. Watson. I, I, I'm, I'm taking a second to try to remember. There's been so much that's going on between you guys over the last couple of years. All I know is it started when you sent my husband, when my uh, my husband sent you an email to leave us out of this. Because Hold Jackie on. and I are friends and I knew that she, I knew what was going on. They, you had made a comment that I was doing narcotics in front of uh, my daughter. And then you even told Sasha that there that's, was proof. That's not what I'm asking. If you, I apologize. My, okay. Your Honor, um, I'm specifically asking her what. Objection, Your Honor, it was asked and answered. She said she did not recall. But she's speaking to the things that she knew of that uh, happened in that court case just now, just before this. So yes. How does she have information of what was said? She is saying that she. Knew Mr. Wolf, the court sustained the objection. Sorry. Ask a new question. Um. Did you not understand, or what was your understanding that I would not have to bring up you and Kevin because my children were being left in your care or at your house, which would involve you? I understand that, but there was nothing wrong in my house. I have a four bedroom house that's clean, filled with lots of food for the kids. The kids had beds to sleep on. They were not on the floor. The kids were had everything they needed at my house. So I couldn't understand why you were angry about that. I thought you'd be happy that somebody took your children in and gave them a good life. My husband okay. played video games with Connor every day. We did nice things for them, Jeff. I gave them a place to live when they needed somewhere to go. And I thought you would think that would be kind, but instead you wrapped my family into this. How, how do you- and we didn't need understand? to be wrapped into it between you and Jackie. I'm sorry, what? I need you to slow down and speak one at a time, please. Okay. What made you feel that I was angry? You, I don't know if it was you or if it was my husband, but there was an email that went back and forth between you, you two. Do you I have did not initiate email? any type of email. Let me provide the emails that were sent between yourself. No, there was and an, another email that has to do with you and my ex common law husband. Can you please show me that email? Because I don't have. I, I don't have it up. I didn't know I was expected to. I thought you were going to pull it up. Your Honor. This is from my husband. I'm, I'm assuming. Can you tell me if this was sent from your husband? I'm reading it. It looks like it was written from, yes, it says Kevin Anderson. That is my husband. Can you read it out loud, please? Is it possible? I don't want to cause any trouble, but. 
Objection, Your Honor. Foundation, uh, the witness that would have sent this is not present to testify that this is what they sent. Um, I do not object to the first part of the exhibit that has the email from the witness to the petitioner, but this uh, this email would require at least testimony of the petitioner or testimony of the sender in order to set the foundation that this is what actually transpired. Okay, the objection is sustained. Mr. Wolf, this witness can't authenticate an email from someone else. Okay, um, she's been speaking to this, but that's okay. Okay, so I guess what I'm just trying to say is there. No, you're asking questions. You're not testifying. Yes. Okay, um, remember right. your role yes, is questioning. Now, how often um, would you say, Lori, that we've gotten together or that you've had a chance to uh, know me by seeing and not hearing something from someone else? I've known you for a very long time, Jeff. I'm not entirely sure what you're asking. I'm sorry. Let me rephrase. Thank you. How many times have we spoken over the phone, just you and I or myself and your husband or my family and yours, minus Miss Wolf? And had interactions where it was solely about between us. We have not had any interactions since Jackie moved in with me. How we often in the on the phone? Years, nothing. So, how often in the fourteen years that you say you've known me, have we actually gotten together where it was just us, without Miss Wolf? I don't think we've ever gotten together just up. It was usually always in a group setting with Jackie or with Desi and Kevin. I don't think no. it was ever just the two of us. And how many times would you say that that happened over the last 14 years? That we got together as a group? Sure. That's what you're mentioning. You Multiple time. times. I mean, we, we did some holidays like Easter's at your house when you all were married, Thanksgiving. Um, we had a lot of fun doing like Christmas parties. I remember I saw some of the pictures. So, I mean, we, we used to do a lot of fun things, all of us together. Would you say that we got together more than 10 times in the last 14 years? Would you say that we got what? together more than 10 times in the last 14 years? I would say definitely more than 10, absolutely. In the last 14 years, would you say that we got together more than 20 times? Probably around 20, that sounds around right. About 20? I would say a little more. I mean, okay. like I said, for a long time, we spent a lot of time at your house, but I don't have but, the exact number. But all those times, we were in a group setting and never do we have really a lot of one-on-one -on -one experience or interaction to where it would show that you actually truly know me and my character and how I parent. Okay. I Can you ask me a yes or no question, please? I'm sure. not really sure. Would you say that. that in those 14 years, that those 20 times we were, you were given enough interaction to where you can understand my way of parenting and, and okay I, I get the question now yes okay did you ever witness my parenting and how if so did I, you're, you keep putting your head down and i need to read lips jeff in what ways have you witnessed my parenting um when i knew you i i, I witnessed that you were a decent dad. I mean, you have a, a nice house. I can't deny that at all. Um, but you have to understand over the years, I don't know anything about your parenting really now because we're not no longer friends. I know what I know now, but in the beginning, again, I, I did think you were a nice parent. I did think we did a lot of fun things together. I never saw you do anything like uh, physically abuse your kids or anything. I know you could be slightly strict, but I get that you're a parent. Um, and that's really all I can remember because you have to also own up to we have not hung out in a very long time. Correct. Uh, in the last five years, how often would you say we've actually hung out? In the last five years, I really don't think we have much. We have okay. not been okay. friends in a long time. Thank you. Um, one possible last question. I apologize. What's the last what? One last question. Uh, I believe I apologize. Just give me a quick moment. Okay. Your Honor, that's fine. I have no further questions. 
Okay, Ms. Hobrin, do you have anything else for Ms. Watson? Um, I think just uh, one or two questions. Uh, Ms. Watson, why are you no longer friends with Mr. Wolf? Why am I now on the fence with him? I'm sorry. Why are you no longer friends with Mr. Wolf? There's two big reasons. A, how much he's thrown Jackie in the mud with all this. I feel like a lot of this didn't need to go this bad. And then B, just, you know, putting my family in the mix of everything when at the end of the day, we were doing everything to help the family. And in my opinion, you should be grateful not throwing that family under the bus. So there's a course I'm, I'm, I would never want to maintain a friendship with somebody like that. Um, and just seeing the behaviors of how just seeing the behaviors and stuff, it's just different. I used to see a really, really happy Jeff, and then it kind of seems like I went to his house a while ago. I do not remember dates. I apologize. Um, we went to his house to kind of oh, drop off his boys. I don't know if he remembers, but it was just me and Kevin, and um, and then I met Sasha, and it was just kind of awkward. We we were trying to do something nice. He seemed slightly. You know, he invited us in, but it was just it was just an awkward moment. He was showing Kevin guns. Objection narrative, Your Honor. I'm just being honest. Just I mean, that was the last time I ever Ms. saw Ms. Watson, him. the objection was sustained. Oh, Once okay. an objection is made, you stop speaking. Okay. All right. Ms. Hobrin, you really need to speed it along. Let your witnesses know how courtroom procedure unfolds. Um, but it's apparent that that hasn't been done with this and other witnesses. So it's um, making the day very difficult for the court and my court reporter. But yes, if you could speed things along, you have just about 30 minutes of your time remaining. And Ms. Watson, um, were you using drugs or intoxicated or any of the allegations that were in the original TRO? which it sounds like you're familiar with, do you disagree with the statements that were in that affidavit? Let me ask this better. Um, Mr. Wolf mentioned, or you mentioned that you were accused of using narcotics. Were you using narcotics during the period that the children were residing with you? All right, we lost the witness. Let's get on. We can go ahead and move forward. I I think for time economy, we can just move on. Okay. And Mr. Wolf, I assume you didn't have any additional questions for her. No, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. All right. And Ms. Hobrin, do you have other witnesses? Or are you going to call Ms. Wolf at this time? I have uh, one more witness who is the in-home caretaker for the woman that um, Jackie and the children reside with, who sees the children every day. Um, I'll try and keep that very quick. And then I was going to call Miss Wolf, unless we have 30 minutes in total, including for my closing or 30 minutes for witnesses. I mean, the time is in total. <laughs> There's not an extra batch of time for closings. Um, there's no one in the waiting room right now, so you may want to go ahead and call Ms. Wolf. All right. Um, she also has technical difficulties, so we'll see if she shows up and I still have time. And if not, we can go ahead and just proceed with Ms. Wolf. Okay. Ms. Wolf, if you could unmute yourself. Okay. If you'd raise your right hand and be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I didn't hear an answer. Sorry. Yes. Can you hear okay. me? Yes, I can hear you now. And just please be sure to speak one at a time and not over each other. Thank you. You may proceed, Ms. Hoberman. Jackie, have the circumstances around your co-parenting with Mr. Wolf substantially changed since the divorce decree was first signed? Yes. Have there been incidences where Mr. Wolf has used the children as leverage in order to get his way when you disagreed with him on a co-parenting decision? Yes. 
Your Honor, I'd like to introduce into evidence um, respondents exhibit here. 13. Okay, are you going to display it? I am going to display it, Your Honor. I had the petitioner's box open since he was um, having difficulty getting that on the screen. Is everyone able to see this? Yes, you're offering R13? Yes, Your Honor. Any objection to R13? Uh, no, Your Honor. It's admitted. All right, Jackie, these text messages that I have here are these text messages um, fair and truthful pulled straight from your phone? Yes, they are. They're screenshots. And was this an exchange with Mr. Wolf from 2021? Yes, it was. All right. Now, I'm going to read just a few things from here um, into the record. LOL, if one hour is late, that big a deal. I'll drop them off at six. It's only them. You're hurting. The time was for them to have fun with the project. I'll be sure to let them know they're not able to eat. LOL. It's all about the court with you now, huh? Just validates every reason why I'm so happy we're no longer together. Just wish I didn't have to deal with you on this level either. Your Honor, Objection. These, these... I, I'm sorry, I'm not finished, Your Honor. Um, you're a, pardon my language, Your Honor. You're a F word idiot. You're a F idiot. I gave you that Friday thereafter because the boys begged me not to have it go to court so I can form to your day and you still push it and do even worse and try to take away from the kids by trying to go after child sport congratulations just like your family can you take in person out of the ghetto but you can't take the ghetto out of the person oh please you're not even worth the effort to do so stop texting me your bs oh you can grab them what's so sad is you're putting them through this not me they're going to try and talk to him and make him feel even worse. Good job, mom. Or should I say Jackie, because no mother would do this or make the kids opinion request and feeling so unconsidered. Okay. So it just goes on. Um, is this text exchange a good example of what your communications with Mr. Wolf are like? Yes, they are. Do you have uh he mentions like your family do you have a family history of experiencing abuse um emotional and verbal yes is mr wolf aware that you are vulnerable to emotional and verbal abuse yes he is in text messages like these does he leverage that knowledge in order to get his way yes he does does that make it difficult for you to meet the needs of the children? It's it's very, very hard because I'll have his words in my head when I'm trying to make a decision and trying to figure out what's the right thing to do sometimes, yes. And for this exchange, can you explain to me the circumstances surrounding why the children were not going to be able to eat? Um, I don't remember how it all started, but it sounds like it's one of the threads where he said he was going to bring them at a certain time and he didn't, which is still happens through to this day. And, um, and me asking him when he's going to be dropping them off and then, you know, using 
my kids against me to um to try to sway me to his side you know so it, it's this is just one of the many times that he's used my kids to just try to get his way for this particular incident do you remember if um he actually withheld food from the children as punishment for not being able to extend his no, no, lacks personal uh, objection lacks personal knowledge or speculation overruled no me, i i'm sorry let me restate that um since i didn't get to finish the question before there was an objection um for this particular incident did the did you pick up the children and they had had food withheld from them i don't recall in this instance if that was the particular case is it common enough that he will refuse to feed them if he can't get extended possession time that you can't remember um he uses them and their eating a lot as an excuse to be late to drop offs i received pictures of the kids eating and him um stating you know similar situations to this saying, you know, um, well, I can't bring them right now because they're eating and it was like two hours after the fact. So it, it wouldn't, this is, yes, a, an example of, you know, situations like that happening in the past. All right. And the language that he uses, cursing at you, calling you names, like in this exchange, is that standard interactions that the two of you have? Yes, it is. Has that materially gotten worse since the divorce decree was signed 11 years ago? Yes, it has. Now, when you first started co-parenting, um, you heard, when you first started co-parenting, did Braden get counseling after you were divorced? Yes, he did. And you did you hear Mr. Wolf's testimony that he had no knowledge of that counseling until after the fact? Yes, I did. Is that a lie? Yes, it is. Why is that a lie? Because he actually attended the very first session that me, Connor, I mean, sorry, me, Braden, and the therapist had at the office at the time. And at the time, did he have objections to psychotherapy? He was not thrilled about it. And Connor, I mean, sorry, Braden only had about three or four sessions in total. Was that because the um, provider recommended discontinuing or did Jeff withdraw his consent to psychotherapy? Um, it was because she was able to determine what it was that Braden was suffering from and offered solutions. So she she felt that um, it was enough for them because he was only seven years old at the time. Do you think his behavior during that period of co-parenting was reasonable? I'm sorry, what was the question? Do you think the way that he handled Braden's counseling after the divorce was reasonable? No. I don't see why he would have had any problems with con with Braden going to have to get therapy. Right. But you, you just said that he went with you yes. and it was only discontinued. So at the time it was reasonable in your opinion. Yes. Is that manifestly different than your experience during dependency of the case with the psychotherapy for Connor? Yes. What has been the situation with trying to get, counseling for Connor um so with Connor last year he was I was be I was being given information from different sources about certain behaviors that my son was exhibiting you know not just from Kevin and Lori but from other family you know from other friends as well and um I use that to you know, that information that I was getting to decide that 
you know, my son needed to talk to somebody that it was beyond my scope to be able to help my child. So I, you know, reached out to see if I could get, you know, therapy. We tried a couple of sessions. Jeff said that he wanted to be a part of it. The first one got canceled and then the second one got canceled. So um, a year ago, Connor was not able to get it. And then this time he had two sessions. Did you have to pay for those ses those sessions that got canceled? Yes, I did. Were you given a reason why you couldn't have those sessions during your possession period? No, I just, he, he just didn't, um, he just canceled them for some reason. So when they happened a year ago, they were canceled because they, they, that was the part that we were communicating between the two lawyers, right? Trying to get this on the board and he had agreed to it. And but he said he wanted to be a party of it. And then he didn't show up to the first one. And I had to pay for that one because it was last minute. And then we tried to reschedule again and give him I believe it was three weeks notice this time. And I never heard back from him about um, a rescheduling date. And so it was just dropped at that point because I wasn't able to move forward with the therapy without his consent. Okay. Um. Moving on, the incident that we discussed in testimony yesterday about Connor getting hit in the head with a baseball bat, did Mr. Wolf actually tell you about that happening? No, he didn't. How did you find out that Connor had been hit in the head with a baseball bat? Um, I had just gotten off of work. I worked overnight in the ER at that time. So I had just gotten off of work, picked Connor up from his house. We were um, heading home and then Connor started screaming really, really loud about having some head pain. So I called Jeff and asked him if anything had happened because I was going to take him to the doctor. And then I called the doctor's office after I found out what had happened and made the appointment and had Connor seen. Do you typically schedule the boy's doctor's appointments? I schedule all the appointments. Do you typically have to also take the children to all the appointments? Um, there are, there has been instances where I've made the appointments and he's taken the boys to the appointments, but he's never taken the boys to the appointments on his own without me having first made the appointment. Have you always been responsible for enrolling the children in school? Yes, I have. Has that become more difficult to do over the years since the initial order? Yes having to try to interact and get information in a timely manner is just very, it's, it's very difficult. And so um, if I can't get the information in a timely manner, then I do what I feel is best at that moment. Have um, you had, um, let me put my thoughts together real quick here, because I want to make sure that you're able to, to speak to, to the situation at hand and the difficulty that you've been having. Um, do you believe that you can continue to co-parent successfully with Mr. Wolf if the orders aren't modified? I will do my best to continue to do so, but no, I don't think that co-parenting is going to get any better. Have the children's health changed significantly since the order was first entered? Um, Brayden has admitted to anxiety from time to time. And, um, and has had a lot of stomach issues. And um, Connor, just every once in a while, there's just... Um, Connor has a hard time communicating his, his feelings about things. And so trying to get him to open up is very difficult. And so, you know, just in general, yeah, it's just been, it's been hard. If you didn't have to go through, um, trying to coordinate with Mr. Wolf for healthcare decisions, would you be able to get the children um, to services faster and more efficiently? Yes. Do you believe that delays caused by trying to coordinate with Mr. Wolf have significantly harmed the children? Yes. 
when the children have a problem um, with their health or with school, are they consistently communicating with you what their needs are? Yes. Do you, would you, if you are put in a position to be sole managing conservator where you're making decisions, would you continue to inform Mr. Wolf of the status of the children if you ordered to do so? Yes. Have you ever in the history of co-parenting withheld vital information from Mr. Wolf? No. What traditionally, we're going to go generally, if there is something pertaining to the children, how do you proceed in order to collaborate with Mr. Wolf? Um, I just, we, we use the app now to make sure that all the communication is in there, the, the court order app that we got from last year. And I make sure to input the, you know, the appointments as I make them into there so that I've, I've learned how to do that so that he has visibility into when these appointments are happening. Now, it used to be that I would just either text or communicate or email, you know, all of this information. Sometimes it was ahead of time. Sometimes it was after the fact. It just kind of depended on what, you know, what necessitated at that moment. In your order, the two of you are supposed to be splitting financial responsibility for the medical expenses of the children, and you're supposed to just be maintaining the insurance have you had difficulty getting contributions from mr wolf for shared expenses i haven't received anything since 2020 have you incurred significant expenses for the children since 2020 um yeah connor's had braces Braden's seen a lot of specialists this year so there's been a lot of financials going on and then before the initiation of this case, it's been mentioned uh, you went to reside with um, the witness, Lori, yes. in order to improve your home circumstances. Have you since then moved into a household that is satisfactory for your children? Yes, I have. Okay. And no when... Lay witness? Overruled. Um... When you agreed, um, when you were doing that move, did you ask for the the child for the children to reside with Jeff? When I just yes or no, I will get beyond that. Do not do not go into a narrative, please. What was your question again? I'm sorry. Did you ask Jeff to take possession of the children? Um, full time for a period of time when you were moving into Lori's. Yes. Did you ask that that be limited just to summer break? Yes. And Jeff was aware and acknowledged that it was only for summer break to allow you to find more suitable housing. Is that correct? Correct. I'm going to show you a text message communication from Mr. Wolf. It's respondents exhibit number 20. There's nothing on the screen, Miss Hoburn. I was trying to pull it up, Your Honor, before. Okay, there it is. Okay. So I apologize for the letters being a little lower. I will increase magnification here. Okay. Now, it says, Sasha, do all communications before you move to app close regarding the children go through the same phone, whether it was Jeff or Miss McClellan? Yes, a great majority of them did. Okay. And in this text message, does this look like the text message that you received from Jeff? 
Yes, it is. Have you changed it or altered it in any way from how it's displayed here? No, it's a screenshot. Your Honor, I'd like to offer um, this exhibit into evidence. Any objection to R20? I do, because the text messages that are being shown are cut off and it's missing information. There's a second page. Apologize. Thank you. No objections. R20 is admitted. For the record, it says here within the con within this text message, sorry, I know you mentioned at the baseball game Tuesday, I would be taking the kids full time over summer. But when does that start? Is that correct? Yes. So you made it very clear when you two were agreeing to this expanded possession schedule that it was meant to be for summer break. Correct. What happened after the uh, Mr. Wolf got possession of the children? It got very chaotic. Um... Okay, let me narrow it down for you so you don't have to think about what I'm going for. Um, did Mr. Wolf allege that you had voluntarily surrendered all possession of the children to him? Yes, he has. Did he demand that you start paying him money for their care while in his possession? Yes, he did. And initially, did you tell him that you would try and financially assist? Yes, I did. Were you unable to financially contribute because of financial difficulties you were experiencing? Yes, it was difficult. When Mr. Wolf was demanding that you give him money for food for the children, did he offer to reimburse you for the medical expenses from 2020 to 2022 that he had not reimbursed you for? No, we, that never came into discussion. I'm ready to pass the witness. Okay. Mr. Wolf, do you have any questions for this witness? Yes, I do. Um, Your Honor, uh, first of all, I don't know where to start with this, but uh, in regards to this situation here, um, what was your, did you initially offer money for food and things like that? for that time when I was taking them for the summer? Objection, yes. when I asked that and the witness had answered it already. Okay. I'll sustain. Uh, did you follow through with that offer of money for food while under my care for the summer? Objection, you're off. Your Honor, asked and answered, the witness has already said that she was unable to provide that and the reasons for doing so. I'll overrule the objection. You may answer. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. State the question one more time, please. Regarding the money that was offered, what was the reason why you were unable to pay that? Because I had just moved out of my apartment and incurred a lot of expenses with having to relocate. And so I was not able to give you the amount that you were requesting. Was there an agreement about the amount of time that you would be taking the kids and what that schedule was during the summertime that I had them? Yes. And what was that agreement? that you made that they would be spending the nights with you that I would still be feeding them when I got them after school and after I got off of work that I would still see them every other week like we had been doing I just wasn't able to have them overnight but that would be but once I was able to get them into the overnights you know then start having them overnight at Kevin and Lori's and how often would you say you met the commitment of coming and picking them up for the days that you had them for the every other week period? I was there every time. 
Every time. Every time. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm trying to see if I have some evidence. Your Honor, one second, I apologize. Six. One second, I'd like to enter, into, uh, enter a piece of evidence here, if you don't mind. Six. I'm working off of my device of a tablet and um, this, so I can reference the evidence number. Okay, hold it up. Okay, um, I'm going to share the screen. I don't know if it, I just want to ensure that everyone is able to see that this is a calendar. We don't see anything, Mr. Wood. Oh, oh. Apologize. There we go. And share. Okay, we can see it now. Thank you very much. And you're offering P56? P56, yes, Your Honor. Is there any objection? I, I have no foundation for what this is, Your Honor. It is, uh, Your Honor, it is. Foundation. Okay, Mr. Wolf, um, I'm going to sustain the objection. Is this your calendar? It's a calendar of, I try to keep, you know, track of things, especially uh, her time and actually picking up the kids and how that, um, how often okay. that happened. Okay, well... Miss Wolf probably is not going to be able to lay the foundation for a document that she did not create. But, um, I mean, you can Absolutely. attempt to do so if that's your plan. But, um, You're, okay, Your Honor, I understand that. Absolutely. Um, you know, the X is here just basically reference the days that she did not. Come. Okay. Remember how you're not testifying? You're asking questions now? Yes. You're acting as your attorney. So if there is some rebuttal testimony that you want to offer after Ms. Hobrin's done with her case, you could do so at that time, but you may not testify when you were supposed to be questioning the witness. Sorry, Your Honor. Ms. Wolf, would you say that on the days with the red X that you had, you actually came to see the kids or pick them up in any type of way. Ob objection, Your Honor. I'm I'm still confused as to what this foundation is here, and this is from over a year ago. So I'm not sure that this was will be sufficient to refresh Miss Wolf's memory since she didn't create this calendar. Okay. Um Mr. Wolf, you filed the modification in August of 2022, and you're showing a calendar of June 22. I'm going to sustain the objection. Um, all right, Ms. Wolf, uh, would you say you gave me ample notice for the therapy sessions that you had decided to embark on with Connor Wolf with advance notice prior to them being conducted? Objection, Your Honor. I am unsure what ample is. If um, the petitioner could clarify what he means by that. Overruled. Mr. Wolf, are you done with this document for the time being? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to stop sharing right now. I apologize okay. for that. Thank you. I believe I have one other document. I just want to bring in a place. And so, Ms. Wolf, to rephrase, do you, did you provide me notice prior to the therapy sessions taking place that Connor was going to be put into therapy? No. At what point did you inform me that Connor was going to be put into therapy? After I spoke with his pediatrician 
and his pediatrician referred me to a neurotherapist and the neurotherapist told me to get your consent for assessment. Okay, so there was an order for consent of assessment by our, by the boy's pediatrician? Yes, the pediatrician is the one that gave me the list of neurologists for me to speak to. And when you went to them about a reason for that, what was the reason you gave? I told him that when I spoke to the therapist, the therapist recommended me talking to the pediatrician about Connor taking a supplement called methylfolate. And when I asked the pediatrician about methylfolate, the, me the pediatrician recommended that I speak to a neurotherapist in order to see if that is something that would assist with Connor. Do you feel that the therapist was able to provide a good account for the full scope of Connor, who he was and how he is when in an environment with his brother? Uh, he only had Wait, two therapists. Objection. I'm sorry. Objection, Your Honor. Compound question, I think. Can we get that clarified? Sure. Um, would, I apologize. Ms. Wolf, would you feel that with the information that the psychologist or therapist had, that it was sufficient to provide a recommendation for a supplement of that type, which then led to neuro psychological questioning or testing? I'm sorry, are you asking me if the therapist had the right to ask me to talk to the pediatrician? No, I'm sorry. Do you feel that the therapist had enough information to make a determination that Connor should have been given a supplement based on Objection, Your Honor. Calls for expert testimony and what's sufficient information for medical referral. Overruled. You may answer. Okay. Um, no, which is why he referred me to the child's pediatrician to speak with him about it. He made a suggestion, recommended that I speak to the pediatrician, which I did. Okay. And in speaking to that pediatrician, you mentioned that you use the doctor's or the therapist, I apologize, uh, recommendation. But yet you're saying that that recommendation wasn't with enough information to be, I guess, valid. Did I understand that correctly? Um, the therapist made a recommendation and requested that I speak to the pediatrician to confirm whether or not this would be something that Connor would benefit from. Okay. And so I followed his recommendation. But yet you even said yourself that you did not feel that he had enough information to make a, a recommendation like that for medication. I feel that if he made the recommendation, then he probably felt that he had sufficient information to be able to recommend that I speak to the pediatrician. Can I ask, did the doctor have any information about how Connor acted in an environment with his brother the other 50% of his time when with me? Connor only had two therapy sessions before they were canceled. Okay, that's not what I asked. Um, hold on one second. I'd like to admit uh, document P13. You'll need to display it. I'm putting that up, I'm sorry. Your Honor. Okay, um, Sharon right now. I'm I'm open to what this exhibit is, but it sounds to me like he's asking for her to speculate as to what a third party knows about how one of the children is at his location, which I am not sure this witness is capable of testifying to. Uh, you're on. You're going to need to wait until a question is asked to make an objection. So my apologies, Your Honor. Your Honor, I'm merely trying to show that without that with her statement that she did not feel that he had enough information to make a recommendation like that that it that this is showing that there is 50 percent of the time lacking of how connor interacts to make a judgment like that and i'm just asking okay that's not a question that's you testifying again would you like to offer p13 Yes, I would like to offer P13. Is there an objection to P13? 
Uh, it looks like a combined exhibit of different um, different communications. So for this first text message, I have no objection to this first uh, page of the exhibit, but I can't. All right, Mr. Wolf, we need you to display each page of the exhibit so council can determine if she has an objection, although should have already looked through the exhibits in box prior to the hearing starting yesterday. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the exhibits were not uploaded by the petitioner, I don't believe, until right before yesterday. And there's something like 40 of them, and none of them were exchanged in discovery. So I, I apologize that I am woefully underprepared for this exhibit. That's my fault. These were not submitted more than a few hours than yours. So, um, I'm having a hard time hearing you, Mr. Wolf. Ms. Wolf, uh, I'm I'm just trying to understand if Ms. Wolf recalls sending this message to me. I'm sorry, Mr. Wolf. We're still on the exhibit. You need to display each page for council to review. You've only displayed two of the pages so far. I need to have her look at them all so I can determine if she has an objection or not. I understand, Your Honor. I it's just that one that one thread. I, I wanted to make sure there was a scroll bar. I don't know okay. why, but there's a scroll bar with all the other pages being blank. It's just this one text thread. Okay, right. well, on the left, I can see that there are additional pages. Click on three. Is it pulling up for you? Because it's not pulling up for me. No, it's not. It's, that was my it says word. your connection to box is being blocked. I have no idea. I'm I'm just gonna be able to I'm just gonna have to go with what is in front of you here, I guess. Um Okay, we'll ask your next question. Uh it says here that uh would you agree, Jackie, that it says here that with a, it shows that Connor met with a therapist three times? Or two or would it be the two times that you mentioned? So I made three appointments, and we only attended two. And would you agree that this is the first communication you had with me that advised of this type of therapy being yes. conducted? Yes. What is it that you feel it was my objection to this therapy? When you can wait, objection, Your Honor, calls for speculation. Can it be rephrased? Absolutely. Um, Overruled. Okay. Uh, you can answer the question. Okay. I'm sorry, Jeff. Can you repeat your question again, please? Yeah, I, I'm not phrasing it right. Probably. Um. What is it that I objected to in our conversations regarding Connor's therapy? There was no objection at that moment when I sent that to you. What was the objection I provided even after that moment? When you, I got a notification from the therapist that you had spoken to him and you had canceled the meeting with him. That was my first understanding of the, the objection to it. And then after I gave you my reasons for why I was having him talk to the therapist, you said that I should have consulted with you first regarding this. There was no other reason why I stated I had a concern with this. None that I can recall. Did I ever mention I had a problem with therapy? No. Would you agree that the choice of therapist, it's not, it's, let me rephrase, I'm sorry. Um, what steps did you take in determining that this was the appropriate therapist for Connor? I went into my United Healthcare website and searched for pediatric therapists that would go ahead and you know, speak 
to kids his age. Did you ever communicate with Connor to advise him that he was going to go to therapy or the reasons why? Yes, I did. Before him? Yes, I did. I even gave him a choice of whether it was a male or female therapist that he wanted to speak to. Your Honor, um, I think I have one moment. I'd like to bring one other document to play. That will be more than hopefully this. No, I know I need to submit that document first, so give me one moment. And what I'd like to provide is the notation or the notes that came back from the site uh, the therapist as to his feeling about how the whole process went. Um, so his notes to me, as I was not a part of the conversation with that Jackie had with him. Um, I'm sharing right now. Okay. Are you offering P1? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. I'm offering P1. Any objection to P1? Your Honor, we have the complete record in our exhibits, so I'm just trying to confirm that this is um, the whole document, and if so, I will have no objection other than for lack of context. Hold on. No objection, Your Honor. P1 is admitted. Now, in the prior um, document I showed it, you stated that you were not privy to the discussions that Connor had with his therapist. Am I correct? No. I spoke in the very first one because I needed to give him context as to why we were. I was requesting this. So I was in the first part of it, and then he had me excused from the room, and then he continued the conversation with just Connor. So on the July 7th text thread that we were just looking at, you did not state that you were not privy to his discussions with the doctor, correct? With the no, I was not part of the conversations between Connor and the doctor. Uh, I'd like to show that, let's see, that it reads, uh, once alone and his mother was present. So one of the times that, the sessions took place. Well, there are two sessions, as you mentioned. One was alone and one was with you present. Um, do you deny that there was also an attempt for a session where you were driving in the car with Connor? I was not driving in the car with Connor. One moment. Uh, we're discussing something already. Well, in just one moment, because in this document, it does state, uh, I think it's on the third page. there we go, uh, that during today's session, the family was late logging the client into a Zoom session. When he was in it, it appeared the family was on a brief vacation and the child was in an automobile. This writer met with the child briefly, discussed the need for a higher level of comfort and containment for the sessions, and the child was rescheduled for two days later. Do you not recall that day happening in that scheduled time? I do recall that day. Okay. We were parked. So you were in the vehicle. I'm sorry, maybe I said driving, so I apologize. But you were in the vehicle with Connor as he was trying to have his session with the therapist. I got Connor set up on the Zoom session so that we could go ahead and and then that's how he knew that we were having a family get together and why we were in the car that conversation that whole conversation lasted all of maybe 10 minutes before being rescheduled and you did say well we were in the car right yeah um A lawyer, uh, I'm trying to. Sometimes do not know. So, in the therapist notes as well, uh, it also states that Connor had no idea 
since you, uh, I apologize. Um, the the other council did mention that they have a record of this and they've looked over this. So I guess I could just reference it before instead of scrambling. Uh, it did state in these notations from the doctor that the coroner did not understand or know why he was even in therapy. Uh, would you? But yet, um, you stated that he was aware and of the reasons why. Yes, he was. Whether he understood the reasons why. So would, couldn't the doctor, tell you, but... would you feel that the doctor was wrong in, in stating that? No. <sighs> so would you say that Connor, based on the doctor's notes, was comfortable speaking to you about things that require or that you decided required therapy? I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. I'm sorry. Uh, do, you, do you feel like the, do you feel like Connor is comfortable to speak to you about things like this that put him into therapy? Are you asking me if Connor is comfortable speaking with me in general about other things, including therapy? About this, this, about therapy, about these reasons for therapy. So I explained my reasons to Connor why I had him speak to a therapist. And he doesn't always fully understand everything that we talk to him about, but he was aware that he was going to be speaking to a therapist and the therapist had me sit down while I was in there, had me explain to Connor again, the reasons why we were speaking to a therapist. I, I, I'm not asking that. I'm just mentioning before you put him in a therapy, did, was he aware of the reasons why and what you were and the fact he was going to therapy in the first place? Yes, he was. So I, you're saying that this is incorrect then, what the doctor stated, just, just so I understand. Connor's knowledge and Connor's understanding are two different things. Connor had knowledge that he was going to be having the therapy session. Connor was explained why he was going to have the therapy session. And then it was explained again while we were speaking together at the beginning of the first session, why we were doing this. Was there ever any information given to the therapist as to how he acted or how things were when at my residence 50% of the time? I can't speak to what happens in your home, Jeff. Was there ever a request by you to make sure that I was, uh, that, that information was included for this type of session. I reached out to the therapist because I had concerns. And my con my main concern was, is this a boys will be boys situation? Because I could not understand what was going on between Brayden and Connor. So I reached out to the therapist and we had those two sessions and the therapist said it's more than just boys will be boys and I said okay and that but he also knew that you were going to be brought into this after we made that determination and how was he made aware of that I told him in the very beginning I said I just need to know if this is boys will be boys if this is beyond me or if I'm over worried about situations going on between my brother my two boys and then after you know we've had a couple of sessions I'm going to bring his dad in and you said that without discussion with me he asked if you were going to be a party to it and I said that you probably would be yes I didn't see why you would object to being part of therapy sessions well of course I wouldn't object but I'm just saying I'm asking without informing me or knowing my stance of, of that period, you, you made that um, statement to the doctor. I reached out because of certain incidences that were taking place within my home with the boys. 
And so those you were not party to, you didn't see, you didn't experience. So, you know, it was just me reaching out for additional help and resources from a licensed professional. How often would you say you observe the boys or are with the boys during a given day? Are we talking during the school year or are we talking oh, during the summer? I'm sorry, let me be more specific. You're absolutely right. Um, when seeing or when advising the doctor of these things that were happening, how often did you personally observe these situations? The experiences that I experienced with them, I was party to every single time. So you witnessed the what Connor was doing? Correct. Did you take any steps to maybe even talk to Connor ahead of time about what was going on or, or what he was doing that was of such concern? Yes, I did. And did Connor mention any reason for those actions? Yes, he did. And what were those actions that were a concern and stated specifically? When I asked him why he instigates his brother, he says that because when he, he gets hit by his brother, at least he knows that his brother's given him attention. So he instigates his brother because when he's hit by his brother, he knows that that's attention. Okay. Um, was his brother involved in the therapy sessions at all? I made separate sessions for Braden, but canceled them after Connors were canceled. Okay. Was there a reason why uh, you didn't either include both in a, in a session? I don't know if that could be done, or is there a reason why one went before the other? I had to get two separate therapists for them. Okay. Was it made aware to Connor that that was happening, that you were including the brother in, in this, so he did not feel alienated? Connor was aware. Connor may not remember being aware, but Connor was made aware of my decisions for both of the boys. Connor, I have a, a, a audio I'd like to submit. Um, I'm scared that I don't know if it will actually work. Um, is there a way I can have just two or three minutes, like on a, I guess, well, like we did before, on a short recess to make sure it all works? Is it something that you've uploaded to Box? Yes, it is. I'm just, I'm worried about the technology here and I don't want to um, kind of have, I don't know if it's going to end up pulling screens up or pull something up that it's, you know, I'm okay. working on another computer that's not mine personally, so I apologize. That's my reason for asking. All right. It's about time for our afternoon break. So we're going to take a recess for 15 minutes. During that time, you can work out the technology issues. We'll resume at 2.45. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Feel free to mute and turn off your video until 2.45. Be ready to go then. Thank you. All right, it's 2.45, so we'll give everybody a moment to turn their screen on and get back to their desk. All right, Mr. Wolf, did you figure out your... Yes, I did, Your Honor. Thank you for giving me that time. Okay. Uh, just a moment prior to that, I just want to reaffirm that, Jackie, does Connor, do you feel Connor feels comfortable around you and doesn't feel restrained from any type of emotion or uh, display any type of emotion or feelings? I don't believe Connor feels uncomfortable around me, no. Do you feel like he has to hold in any type of restraint or uh, not be himself in any type of way when in your, with you? No. Okay. 
I'd just like to go ahead and um, show in that same exhibit of P1 on the second page I'm sharing right now. That it does so here that he does report that he feels comfortable speaking with his father. And when discussing with his, uh, let's see here. Just uh, I know you guys have the document as well, but there's this part where he mentions that Connor has to be, Connor feels um, right here, the client, however, did speak of his need to hold in his energy as much as he can around his mother and a distinct need to have a higher level of self-control around his mother and brother. Um, would you feel that that shows that he's able to be himself without any concerns? Yes. Okay. And would you feel that Connor has any reservations in speaking to myself or or scared to speak to me about anything in any way? I believe you read that part in this already. Okay. Do you have any concerns with how I've uh, parented our children? Yes. What concerns are that? Um, I believe that you let them make their decisions. I don't believe that, you know, I believe that you ask their opinions, which is great, but most of your decision making is based on what's going to make them happy instead of what is right for them. Can you provide um, an example? Sure. Okay, um, give me one moment. <laughs> sure. Okay, so when it comes to the, the custody exchanges, I've got ample text messages from you stating that the kids want us to do exchanges on certain days and that by me not agreeing that I am not listening to the needs of our kids. Can I ask, um, have the kids come to you about the schedule? No. They've not asked you to go back to say the schedule we had in place for nine years? The one week on, one week off to be specific? They say they missed that schedule. And I told them that until we come to an agreement that nothing's gonna change that we have to follow what the new rules were set by the court. Okay. And what was uh, so wrong about that schedule that we agreed upon based on the fact that it was given each parent the same amount of time and the week was not split to where it caused trouble with their school and homework and things. It was you constantly being late for the drop-offs. That was the reason why we did it. But the exchange still happened at a certain time. So that was the reason for us changing to a one week on one week off as opposed to the Thursday through Sunday and the Sunday through Thursday. I'm sorry. I, I don't understand your question. Was the reason for, was the reason of being late to drop offs the reason why we changed our schedule? Are you talking about the first time we switched from when I was working overnight and when we moved on to the week on week off schedule. That was the only change that took place until the judge okay. ordered the TRO in the TRO meeting to go back because we could not agree. So yes, I'm speaking about that change of schedule. Okay. So that change initiated from what we had on file to the week on week off to accommodate Desi's kids schedules so that you guys can have more time together. You and Desi came to me and asked me to change it to a week on, week off, because that was the exchange with her and her husband. 
And you said that with the way the schedule was at that time, you guys only had maybe one or two days alone time. And so I conceded and I switched to the week on week off. So you never, I never mentioned the fact that this would allow us to share a even amount of time, both with having a school week uninterrupted and then a weekend to do things for the kids. The initial reason was because you and Desi had approached me and asked me to make the change. Okay. I, I mean, I, there's no way I could say the line. So, okay. Um, the, uh, would you, did you see anything wrong with the schedule being that way? Was there anything that caused difficulty or was troublesome being one week on one week off? Yes. And what was that? When the kids were sick under your care and I would have to call and make doctor's appointments for them. When Braden would text me because he was supposed to be dropped off at my house so he could catch his school bus and tell me that he wasn't going to be going to school that day and that he wasn't feeling well. And so I made at least two or three video calls with the doctors while he was under your care because Brick was complaining about being sick. I'm sorry, that, that I don't know how to fight that ever happening, but. Um, Mr. Wolf, can you please speak up? Yes, yes, um, that, that was just uh, me talking to me here because there's nothing I can do about proving that. Let me just, if I could just uh, go back to the whole therapy and the fact that, um, Connor, she says that Connor was made aware and presents um, that uh, recording I, would, I was trying to share, if you don't mind. Okay, Mr. Wolf, you've got about 25 minutes remaining of your time. You got it. So if you want to call yourself as a rebuttal witness, you're going to need to save time for that and save time for closing as well. Okay, uh, just then real quick, I'll, I'll thank you for uh, informing me of that, Your Honor. Objection, Your Honor. Can we get a foundation for this? Yes, Mr. Wolf, you can't play an audio or video recording unless it's been offered into. I apologize. I apologize. Um, uh, is this admissible? This is a recording that shows the amount of time that she's well that the boys have stated that she spends with them per day and it's to validate the observation uh of you know their interactions and okay i need you to lay a foundation i can tell you don't know what that means so um I mean, who is on the tape when was no it taken who was Absolutely. present those Absolutely. kinds of questions my youngest son was present connor wolf uh, myself and my uh, and Sasha McLennan was also in the room. Objection, Your Honor. This witness can't um, testify to the validity of, of this particular recording, but Mr. Wolf, because he was present, would be able to lay that foundation when he does rebuttal. Okay. Uh, sustain. Mr. Wolf, um, if this was, witness is not on the recording, yeah. she can't authenticate it you will ha have to save it for later. Um, I'm just going to move on with this. Uh, with uh, pertaining to the schooling and you enrolling the kids in school, uh, where does Braden go to high school? Can you answer? Pflugerville High School. And did you personally enroll him into this high school? Yes, I did. did. So you actually went down to the school and enrolled him? I have multiple email communications between the district and the inner district, enrolling Braden from disenrolling him from McNeil, enrolling him into Connolly, and then enrolling him into Pflugerville High School. Uh, I believe I was the one who went down and actually physically enrolled him. Uh, what address um, is he is uh, does he use for the Pflugerville High School? He uses your address. So you enrolled him using all my information. 
you did the complete enrollment process using all my information and I did, I was not part of that. I had a copy of your tax information that had my name still listed as one of the owners on the taxes for the property tax. And they accepted that as proof that I was able to go ahead and enroll Braden into their school district. Uh, do you have the enrollment form that shows proof of that? Because I'd like to object. I don't know how to object to this. I guess I in order to enroll them, you had to be there in person. You're saying that you went there in person is what I asked to enroll him. I understand the communication that was done to disenroll him from McNeil in order to get him to hopefully transfer over to Fluga. But what I'm asking is, did you physically go into the school in person and enroll right in, in school? I did not have to. Did. I did ever. I was able to do everything electronically through their online system and with communication via email between all three parties. And so when registering as classes, you also handled that? I did have a conversation with his counselor as well as Brayden on the line when he was enrolling for his classes. Your Honor, I, I don't know how to say or show that I did that otherwise. I mean, it was not even, it was all done by me. I was in there person with the counselor, but I don't know. Uh, Mr. So. Wolf, I've told you several times, right. this is only asking questions. You can call yourself as a rebuttal witness. Then I'm, done, I'm done asking questions, Your Honor. I'm so sorry to interject and say that um, in that way. Okay. Can you stop the screen share? Yes, ma'am. All right, Ms. Hobren, do you have anything else for this witness? Uh, Your Honor, how am I looking on time? Um, about uh, 12 minutes remaining. Uh, just one quick question then, Your Honor. Okay. Um, Ms. Wolf, in the uh, petitioner's exhibit one that has the therapist notes, is there additional data that you were not asked about by Mr. Wolf? Yeah. And in this exhibit, was there sufficient reason given to you that Connor should continue with counseling? Yes, there was. And in this exhibit, um, Is it your understanding, while not testifying to the substance of this third party's observation, but it is, was it your understanding that Connor was withdrawn by his father from counseling because the therapist did not call to keep him updated and proactively do that for him? That is what it looks like on the notes, yes. Did you sign a release for the therapist to be able to speak with Mr. Wolf? Yes, I did. Did you tell the therapist that Mr. Wolf would be contacting him in order to confer? I told the therapist that we were going to bring him in after I had a couple of sessions, you know, after he talked to Connor and got a basis for what we were discussing or did what you, my concerns were. Did you give Mr. Wolf that information once there was grounds for continuing in counseling? Yes, I did. Did Mr. Wolf react to that by withdrawing Connor from therapy summarily without taking the advice of the professional that he was supposed to be consulting? I was told by the therapist well, that- Objection, speculation. I mean, uh... I, I agree. I agree. Um, Okay, okay, so you're going to rephrase the question? Yeah, I think we can move on, Your Honor, to uh, rebuttal. Okay, so Ms. Hobren, you rest? I rest our case in chief, Your Honors. Okay, Mr. Wolf, the respondent has rested at this time. If you have any rebuttal evidence or testimony to offer, you can do so at this time. I mean, uh, the video was objected to. The audio was objected to. I, I don't know. I'll just go to my closing, I guess. Okay. Well, the video and the other items were objected to because you had the wrong witness on the stand. 
Miss Wolf cannot authenticate a video if she was not on the video present when it was made. You apparently were present when it was made. So you could attempt to lay the foundation for it and see if it is offered without objection or if the objection is, you know, sustained or overruled. We'll see at such time as the foundation is laid and the offer is made. But anything else you would like to tell the court with reference to either your motion to modify or Ms. Wolf's counter petition to modify? Um, just the fact that regarding the financial struggle, um, I, I, yeah. You know, I just want to see, I want to understand uh, if she's ever provided, I can't ask her a question now, so I, I don't know how to do this. I, I'm, I guess I'm trying to. Okay. If you're going to testify, you can do so in the narrative oh. form. And if you have exhibits to offer, you need to. Tell me what they are and screen share them just as you've done previously during this hearing. No, I, I'm just going to go to closing statement, Your Honor. I'll try to just state my purpose there and what I feel and we'll go from there. Okay. Well, before we go to closings, um, let me just pause and take a moment. Um, let's see. So... There are competing motions to modify. Both petitioner and respondent have filed a motion to modify. In your closings, it would be helpful for you to identify to the court what is the material and substantial change that you believe has occurred and what is the evidence that has been put forward through this hearing that supports your position. Tell me what the relief is that you're asking for. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Wolf. Hey, um, you know, the truth is, despite the spin that the other party is trying to make on whether handling a task such as enrolling a child in school it does not constitute the fact that the other parent cannot do that task or perform or be a part of that aspect of their lives. It simply just says that when we had these children, we went in and did like a divide and conquer, which is a normal process for parents to use um, to handle certain things and make sure everything's taken care of for kids. Um, it was not the fact that I couldn't do it. It was just a mere fact that, that that was something she took on. And therefore I, I was not needing to put my time and effort towards that, but it also doesn't say that because I was in charge of all their extracurricular activities and coached their baseball team uh, all their life that she can't do that as well and enroll them in such. Uh, it doesn't mean that either of us lack in parenting. It just means the fact that we decided on tasks and roles and went accordingly. Um. I'm not gonna, I had something written out for a closing statement, but I'm just going to say that, you know, uh, at our house, there is nothing that shows negative or reasons for the children to be pulled. And they have not presented any reasons for the children to be pulled or not given time here when this is their safe haven. They have everything they need here. My concerns were not about her not being a fit parent, but rather the parenting tactics she used and the non-communication that happened before making decisions or for that matter the research that would go into those decisions such as deciding on who is best to speak to our child with therapy and not including me in that process the financial hardships that they speak of that they are using to using other things to show a need for that to get to them was not created by me I had never seen, I had never seen an actual bill paid by them. And I challenged that because they have not provided the court either with any proof of these bills being paid. It was her signature that was put on the decree that showed 
her wanting to take responsibility for owning the insurance and the medical expenses. It was my layman's misunderstanding that I should have handled that or paid for that otherwise. I continued to have the kids on my own insurance, but her, the pitch I have is, or the things I'm wanting are mainly just to be in control of the decisions or at least be informed. There's a motion to enforce that I put together only solely because I was not, she was not following the process when making these decisions that impacted the kids so much. Her financial hardship started well before I was with her and I can attest to that because I was married to her for seven years. I knew her for five before that. Decisions like buying a you know $28,000 Jeep when she had just moved you know into her new residence was not something I would have done. Paying $2,000 for bedroom furniture, moving into a new residence, just being singled after our divorce is not something I would have done. And those things caused her woes that ultimately resulted in them being repoed. She has failed to show how 50% of the copays that she feels are due to her was the sole cause of her financial hardships when it was not. If it's that, I'm happy to pay that if the court wants to decide on the amount of time. But that was not the reason why she's in a financial difficulty and the reason for her to go and pull the kids from the residence that they've let her know that they want to be at and that they have everything here. I didn't even have a chance to show. I know my house and, and the fun and the amount of things I've done here in this house to make it accommodating for them. But I stress in this, unless she was able to show that proof that something was paid by her just putting on a text message as the court saw an amount that I owed and lies being such a big part of our marriage and the reason why we ultimately split, I was not comfortable with using that. And I knew that the money I'd been given her for various reasons throughout was not used in the way that it should have been. So I asked only for the court to allow me, even if it's just a part, you know, to continue to be a part for her to comply or for me to be the sole decision maker in just those big decisions. The medical, taking them to medical appointments did not mean I could not do it during my time. It means those situations never fell where I felt they needed, where they needed to go to the doctor, where they were sick. And at that level, I would have taken them. I had insurance, might as well have used the insurance I was paying for. Um, but ultimately, I think that what's happened here, as you mentioned, the time we weren't using it wisely yesterday, and we were spending the time and wasting the court's time trying to skew something just to get into a position where they could have it match up to where they get she gets financial support from me for the kids. There's nothing that the only reason for that they've said is because of her financial hardships, but there's no proof that that happened because of me. And like I said, if it's about the 50% of co-pays, that can't amount to financial the reasons for everything that have happened. So I hope that um, the court sees that. And all I'm asking is that. Again, I remain a part of the decision making. She complies or I'm made sole decision maker. The sole custody was only an advice for me to get to that point. I, I wanted a clause in there that would allow the mother to be able to see her children when she wanted, unless there was something that caused difficulty. Or if the kids wanted to see the mother, unless there was something that caused difficulty that were like school related, not by me. And I wanted that so it was ensured that I have the best interest of the kids. There's no reason for me to pull them away from her. She's the parents, the kids are alive. They're doing okay. Is there um, things that are, could be improved with the parenting or, or the way she parents? Yes, but ultimately it's not a reason to take them away from her. And there should not be a reason presented to take them away from here, which is where they've said they want to be only because it's stable. She hasn't had stability. Um, we never, she never came to me about alternate ways we could have continued the therapy. I asked my son, I'm talking to the therapist. There's no reason why I would discontinue for them to make that, um, a statement that I am is, is wrong. Uh, I just don't feel like the right things are being 
shown. I know I did a horrible job because I was not able to obtain the representation for all the reasons. Um, but that was not something I didn't try and attempt to do. I knew this was going to be a certain way, and I knew. But so I'm still here. I'm fighting the fight, and I only fought this fight because it came with the request of my children. And this is maybe one of those situations that I should not have. But I felt that there were enough important points to file a motion and to bring up, but not enough points for either side to be, to have these kids pulled away from the other side in any way for any amount of time when there's nothing that's here or there that's really truly made it so they can't be there. I was just trying to do what the kids wanted. I felt they were of age to make that decision being 17 years old and now 13 years old. At what point do we not start taking their opinions into consideration? That is all. Okay, Ms. Sobrin. Thank you, Your Honor, and thank you for your patience during these proceedings. I know that I am out of practice and we've had some difficulties that we've overcome. Um, it is in the best interest of the children for both parent or any parent in possession to meet both their duties and rights while they're in possession. And Mr. Wolf has demonstrated through his own testimony throughout these hearings, a preoccupation with his rights and a lack of interest in his duties, such as the responsibility to take the, doc the children to the doctor while in its possession to communicate to the other party um, that something has occurred. We've provided also down to for the court reporter, I'm getting a little fast. Um, the material and substantial changes can apply to either party or the children in determining a modification. In this case, we have an order that's 11 years old and we have had substantial changes in both households over that window of time. There have been multiple paranoia paramours that have resided with Mr. Wolf over that time. Uh, from his testimony, uh, we can infer that he has a fiance who will be getting married. A marriage of a party is a reason that is common for why a modification might be granted. Um, one party poisoning the mind of the children against the other parent is another reason we might grant a modification. And Mr. Wolf has testified himself that he has spoken to the children about the situation, that he was unaware of the standing orders, and that he has com been communicating with them about the situation. In Petitioner's Exhibit Number 1, the notes state, um, we have evidence that the children are aware of this dispute. And there was not evidence presented that the counter petitioner has ever communicated with the children in this kind of direct manner about what's happening between the parties, other than revolving the possession schedule in which she testified that she told them that they were it had changed because of court orders. Um, a parent changing or losing their job is another reason that a modification might be granted. Mr. Wolf has testified that he left his job beginning of this year, that he is going into a new business um, with his uh, fiance, that his uh, situation financially is different than what it was and unpredictable. We do not know how that is going to play out in his abilities to continue to maintain his lifestyle. We also know that a parent who is neglectful is cause for a modification, and we have pre presented testimony that both of the children over the years have had serious medical needs that required attention while in his care that were put off and delegated to Miss Wolf that could have had more serious consequences, particularly the injury to the head where we still had um, symptoms of concussion days later. Uh, we also consider whether or not the parties are going to abide by the court orders in determining whether a modification is appropriate. And under Mr. Wolf's own testimony, he finds the ordered exchange times as optional for him, but not for Ms. Wolf. Furthermore, um, under the Family Code, Section 156.005, Frivolous Filings of a Modification, the testimony and statements made here today are substantially different than what was alleged in the original petition in the affidavit for TRO. 
um, a frivolous fi filing designed to be frivolous or to harass requires a finding and an assessment of attorney's fees against the offending party. There's been no evidence um, supported here or presented here that there was any material or substantial change of any lasting nature that would have required the relief that Mr. Wolf is seeking, which now he is saying he no longer seeks and wants that 50-50 schedule that they were voluntarily doing. There's also in um, Family Code Section 153.004, um, the court, uh, Section B, the court may not appoint joint man managing conservators if credible evidence of a history of past or present child neglect is presented. There is a rebuttable presumption that a sole managing conservator is not in the best interest of the child with credible but if credible evidence is presented of this history or this pattern of child neglect or physical abuse, that a sole managing conservator may be appointed. We have not made allegations of physical or sexual abuse, but we have presented substantial evidence within the time frame allotted of neglect and a shirking of general parental responsibilities that have been off put to Miss Wolf. We've also presented evidence of the children's health over the past 11 years declining, including the youngest having triglycerides problems, the oldest having gastrointestinal and stress problems, and both children um, likely needing to continue in counseling because of the situation and their awareness of it, but resistance from the petitioner to, to, to do that. Under a standard order, had the parties not pro se done their own order, both parties during their periods of possession would have a duty and a right to non-invasive medical and dental proceedings procedures, right? Either one while they were in possession could do that. Because of the way this order was decided, I do not believe they fully were counseled, but regardless of that fact, it requires them to agree before even non-invasive things are happening. And clearly that has created a lot of tension within co-parenting of these children. We presented evidence that routinely there is verbal abuse and long-winded objections to even basic requests or basic attempts to communicate regarding parenting. We presented evidence that Miss Wolf routinely and consistently is dedicated to informing Mr. Wolf about the situation and circumstances of the children, whereas Mr. Wolf does not give her the same courtesy or abide by the court's order that he do so. And ultimately, um, in making an appointment for a sole or joint managing conservator, section 153.005C2 allows the court to consider a party engaged in a history or pattern of child abuse or neglect in general. So we are, we have a lot that has happened. We have many years of things going up and down but the thing that has been consistently problematic that has gotten more and more debilitating to the best interests of the children and the ability to care for them is the disputes over the past several years over routine things like school enrollment, primary address, um, basic doctor's appointments, counseling, pretty much if there's an issue that these parties should have been able to come to terms with, given that we had um, testimony that earlier post-divorce, they were capable of doing this. The circumstances have clearly changed, so that is no longer the case. Now, whether that is from a change in the paramour that cohabitates with Mr. Wolf, or whether that is because of the increased uh, illnesses or needs of the children or their ages, I, I'm not sure we fully established exactly why, but we did sub we did submit the preponderance of the evidence that there has been conflict that is creating difficulties to getting the children basic, basic um, needs met. Um, we're also asking under section 153.010, an order for family counseling. Um, the court may order a party to pay for and attend mental health counseling if the parties have a history of conflict and resolving issues of conservatorship or possession. I think 
we've established at a criminal level beyond a reasonable doubt that these parties have a history of of conflict within their possession and conservatorship, at least in the past um, few years. Neither one of them disagreed that they've had this conflict. So in any order, I think it might be um, prudent if the court exercised um, its ability to order that counseling, maybe for a limited time or some period of time to assist the parties in moving forward. We are not asking for anything special. We are not, are not asking for supervised visitation or for limitations. What we're asking for is that the orders that have ultimately failed here um, be changed for a standard possession order with Miss uh, Wolf as primary, with standard child support ordered, that Mr. Wolf be ordered to, since Miss Wolf has carried uh, the health insurance for 11 years, that Mr. Wolf be ordered to provide medical support in um, insurance as well as the party split 50 50 medical expenses as they were originally ordered to do. Regarding the joint managing conservatorship, I think there are some areas from the testimony and evidence we presented um, where the parents might be able to reasonably agree on certain things, but um, there is there is testimony from both of them that whether it's school enrollment or more importantly, the, the issue that has really brought us here today, the medical needs of the children, that that is not going well. So if there is an appointment of joint managing conservators, we're asking that in the minimum, the parties both have the right to non-invasive medical and dental while in their possession so that they are not having to answer to each other every time the ch one of the children needs to go to a doctor. Um, that that ultimately sums up our position. I did not have any time to prove up um, the evidence of attorney's fees for Mrs. Wolf that she spent last year or my time here today, but I volunteered my time per se. So it would be up, it would be in the judge's discretion anyway, if uh, you felt that these proceedings merited ordering Mr. Wolf pay attorney's fees. And he did in the pleadings, uh, the pleading that was filed on Friday night, the motion for continuance, um, he did say that he could afford attorney's fees and I believe has provided testimony to that during these proceedings. So that that sums up our position. We are we are trying to get these parties to a reasonable um, place where the, the remainder of their co-parenting for the minor children is far less stressful and makes more sense for the facts as how they actually co-parent. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Wolf, normally the petitioner gets to have the final say and you still do have some time left. So if there's any rebuttal to what Ms. Hoburn said, you can state so now. Outside of all the substantial proof that I, I don't think merits anything as far as parenting goes and witnesses that are all her friends and alliances of an ex-girlfriend who's obviously with threats from her husband that were put on the thing and an alliance with that that are going to come at me this way. I I can't. I, um, I don't feel like there's enough evidence to show any type of reason for the children to be uh, that I cannot perform any of these duties. Uh, there's nothing showing that the one under my care that it was specific that I actually showed any neglect whatsoever. There's nothing showing that uh, no reason for me to have to. It's not about the child support, but it, 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 they're making it that way. And I just don't see where there's any neglect financially or anything. And the fact that I can't afford and my kids have never gone without should be considered when here, this is where they feel comfortable. This is where they have everything. And there's never been a discretion. All these years, we were amicable up until this late new fiance, which my kids have only grown to love and establish a bond with that she's either jealous of or worried of. I don't know. But there's nothing here that the kids nor she can present that have impacted the kids negatively whatsoever. And I will stand by that and always make that a focus. I don't see merit in me having to pay her costs. I understand I was not able to represent it myself so well um follow my own i was not able to train 
attorney to do so. My attorney ability to pay was for this matter here. Um, and despite my ability to show this, there was reasons for me bringing this here. Um, and it's not one-sided. It's not me refusing with her. The conversations, the way I spoke to her on so some text messages were cut off and it did sh not show what was preluded before that. And, but it was not justified either way. I don't condone it. I believe therapy would be a great thing for us to co-parent it uh, together. But I don't see any reason for anything. And the standard visitation would, again, pull kids away from the time here, which this is supposed to be about the kids. And I haven't seen anything that shows that it's been impacted. That, that There's no uh, notes about the bat or anything, no proof of that shown or or the fact that she even paid for these medical bills that she's talking about brought her to a hardship. That's my thing. She, I've never been presented with anything like a bill or an actual payment that she made for me to pay her. Um, it's never been about not helping out. She stayed at my house longer through the divorce, which was our most uh, time, because I didn't want her to be in a bad position when she left. And what she did from there on after is not my... Not my, not my ability to change. So that's all. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your presentation of the evidence um, to everyone involved. I know this has been um, a difficult case for all involved. And before... Um, I share the court's rulings. I did want to go over a few things with the parties. Mr. Wolf, are you still there? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Okay. I need you to stay on camera so I can see yeah. you. Okay. So the Texas Family Code makes it very clear that in order for the court to grant the modification, there must be a material and substantial change. I just want to reiterate, material and substantial change. That's the first thing I wanted to share with you. Um, the fact that people aren't getting along, haven't gotten along, are continuing to not get along, does not rise to the level of a material and substantial change. Second, the family code sets out a presumption that parents are going to be joint managing conservators of the children. And in this case, both parties are joint managing conservators. In order for the court to appoint one party as sole managing conservator, there's a very high burden to be met. Um, evidence that would have to be shown to the court that um, it's in the child's best interest to do so because not doing so would impair the child's health or emotional development. Um, so I just wanted to share those things because that's the base, that, those are the baseline. The Texas Family Code is what the court starts with for both of these motions to modify. Now, the evidence has been apparent, readily apparent that the parties don't agree on anything and everything, depending on the day of the week or what's going on. I think that the request for counseling Ms. Hoberin made is not a bad request. Um, I think that counseling probably would benefit each party to this case, individual counseling, and that the kids also continue counseling. However, because of the way the court is going to rule on the motions, I'm not going to order it as a part of these proceedings. I just want to share that I do think it probably would be of benefit. Also, 
before coming back to court again, I think it would be best for you to mediate these issues, these disputes, so that they could be worked out out of court. I believe it would save time and money and also give you more control over your lives and your kids' lives. This hearing has been a modification hearing. This is not an enforcement hearing, although I see that an enforcement motion has been filed. It was not set for this date and time. To the extent that the parties are not following the orders that are in place, you run the risk that if an enforcement hearing is held and if evidence shows the judge, myself or one of my colleagues, that compliance is not in place with the court orders, then you run the risk of monetary fines, attorney's fees, and or up to a six month stay in the Travis County Jail. None of these are things that I think either party desires to be involved with. I heard some testimony during these proceedings that indicated to me the parties are letting the kids have a say and when they're at dad's or when they're at mom's. That is not appropriate. Kids do not decide where they live or who they spend time with. When they're subject to a court order, the court order needs to be followed. So, One, a few other things. Um, so I will just say, Mr. Wolf, Ms. Wolf, you need to follow the court orders that are in place. You need to do your best to cooperate with each other. The Travis County Domestic Relations Office has a cooperative parenting class that they offer. I believe it's still offered online. It's a class you take. You're not there with your ex. You do it on your own time. I'm not going to order it, order it because of the rulings on the motions to modify, but I think it's something that you should look into. If the problem with this case is we are so many years down the road past your divorce. Um, I don't know if it will or won't help, but it certainly can't hurt to give that a try. It may give you some tools to utilize in your co-parenting relationship. It may give you some perspective. It may give you an outlet to vent your frustrations about how um, this co-parenting relationship is or isn't going. So with reference to the petitioner's motion to modify, I deny that motion there um the burden has not been met to show a material or substantial change and furthermore um as to respondents motion to modify that motion is likewise denied there's no evidence in this case that would justify making one parent or the other the sole managing conservator. So while I think there was perhaps a scintilla of evidence on one side or the other, there's certainly no one came close to the preponderance of the evidence to show that there was a material and substantial change. So both motions to modify are denied. Of course, the parties are free to meet and make agreements between themselves without the court intervention. But because both motions are denied, I can't impose any additional orders or relief because I'm 
denying what was requested. Are there any questions about the court's rulings? Oh, Your Honor. Okay. And Your Honor, I only, I had to use the form. Um, I don't currently have the software to generate the order, but are, are one of us going to be ordered to put in that ruling or are you going to do the order denying them? Well, we can issue an order that simply denies both motions. And I have made a docket note to that effect, denying both motions. Okay, and you don't have any questions either then, Ms. Oberon, other than that? No, Your Honor. Okay, all right. Well, I appreciate um, for all the reasons that we've already talked about that the proceeding has been difficult. Um, sorry to meet the parties under these circumstances. I do wish you the best. Uh, I think it's well within your ability and your power to do better going forward. Uh, put the kids first. If you're doing that, you won't be back in court again. All right. You're excused from the virtual courtroom. Thank you. Thank you.